Let's have a session on financial and non-financial methods of motivation. So the goal here is to impact motivation and employee engagement, and that theoretically should increase productivity or innovation or creativity. Now, thinking about financial methods first, well, they support the ideas of Taylor and Taylor's scientific management, as well as Maslow, but at basic needs, so physiological or safety or security, however you call it. So well, for thinking about Taylor, then piece rate was, was, was his favourite, and that's pay according to the output that employees produce. Positives of that, precise alignment between output and pay, and that should lead to more productivity. But it's likely to lead to more rush or maybe more shortcuts in the production process, could mean more defects or worsening quality. You usually see this in the primary or secondary sectors, as opposed to commission, which is similar, or you might see that more in the tertiary sector, which is your pay is according to the number of sales that you make. And that's usually an agreed percentage of the product per sale. Again, positives here is much along the lines of alignment because you've got alignment here from how many sales to what your pay is. But perhaps the, the issues here is it might lead to too aggressive uh, sales tactics if you're only powered on, on commission. And actually it might lead to detrimental effects on the team if you're all within a team fighting over the same sale because of that commission that's there. Well, that could cause team dynamic issues. The third of the financial methods is salary schemes. So this is when likely you'll sacrifice a small percentage of your pay for other things, such as childcare, pension contributions, maybe a boost to your pension or a company car, but you'll get that at a cheaper price because it's partially subsidized by the organization. So the organization does this because they want to increase their employee retention, keep their best workers at the business, and it breeds loyalty to the organization. But it comes at a cost, the cost of administering the salary scheme. The last thing to think about is PRP, so performance related pay. So here that you will be paid at the end of the year, likely an annual PRP is you'll see a pay rise if you meet or of course you exceed your targets. But um, the problem here is that maybe it's difficult to do in some organisations where it's hard to quantify an actual target and whether it's been met or exceeded. So that's financial methods. The other side is non-financial methods. So here we're supporting the ideas of Herzberg where pay is, of course, a hygiene factor and Maslow at higher needs, so social needs, esteem needs and the highest, of course, self-actualization. So number one is empowerment. So empowerment is providing employees with autonomy, resources, support to take control of their work. And that may include delegation or how the work is completed. And that should lead to more productivity, more innovation. However, it makes sense to do empowerment in a flatter, more organic structure as opposed to a taller or a hierarchical or a mechanistic structure. So it depends on the structure you're doing it within. And also it depends on the organisational culture and whether you have the competent management and culture in place to facilitate superb empowerment. Number two is team working. So team working kind of fits with Herzberg and Herzberg suggested it's a powerful motivator if you have good team spirit, good team working, but only if there's opportunities for growth, for development and for recognition of success amongst your peers in your team. However, it depends how well this is being managed. If it's being managed poorly, it will not succeed. The third of the non-financial methods is flexible working. So this is when you give your employees more control of where, how, when they work. That could be through remote working, which has obviously grown rapidly in the last few years, job sharing or part time work or zero hours contract. Number four is job enrichment and job enrichment is that you make employees jobs more interesting. It could be by giving them new tasks, giving them more decision making to make. Maybe it could be train, develop employees, a different aspect of their role. And that should give them more job satisfaction. That increases motivation because of the growth and development that they've got within their role because they have job enrichment. And the fifth and final one is job rotation. And that's when you assign employees to different departments or functional areas, or it could be locations, or it could be products if there's product ranges involved. So it gives those employees a more diverse understanding of skill sets, depending on which of those areas they were put into. And therefore, they've got more um, they've got more ability um, to to rise through the business because they have more of a strategic oversight of the business, particularly if they've been in different functional areas or different locations or different product ranges. And there you've essentially done 
on the job training and found your, your managers of the future. And that might actually recruit, reduce your recruitment costs in the long term. Hope that helps. See you in the next sesh.